tell everybody who you are. If they don't know you already, they should. So explain yourself. Tom McDonald, a controversial rapper extraordinaire turned very recent pop star. Um, And uh, Google me and you'll find probably a lot of things that you you'll either you'll either love what you find or you'll hate what you find. Okay, so before we get into like the songs and the music and stuff, I want to I you know, I do my research. So this wasn't really your first career. There was something else you did that was kind of cool. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I was a pro wrestler for um, many years before I was an artist, and uh, I wrestled all over the Canadian independent circuit and did a bunch of pay-per-view shots and wrestled with a lot of former WWF and WCW guys and did that for, geez, almost 10 years, Um, and then uh, got out of that and got into music, so it's been a wild ride to say the least. I don't doubt it. So tell me a little bit about your inspiration of getting into music. Well, the Reader's Digest is kind of, uh, I had been writing music, <coughs> pardon me, since I was a kid. And uh, that all started with, uh, I was writing poetry and, and, and sort of rock songs and stuff. Like my dad took me to a pawn shop one day and gave me five bucks and told me that I could buy anything that I wanted in the pawn shop. And I found a milk crate full of CDs and I came across a Tupac album called All Eyes on Me which was a double CD set. And I was just looking at, I had never heard of Tupac before. I was looking at it sort of economically as a kid. And I was like, if I buy this Tupac album, I'll get two CDs for the price of one. Um, Cause it was a double CD set. So bought the Tupac album totally sort of like was enthralled with hip hop from that moment forward, kind of fell in love with it. And then um, a few years later, I was sitting on a yellow school bus heading home from, 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 from school and this kid sitting next to me on the school bus had a a discman and he said like hey you have to listen to this cd i stole it from my brother his name's eminem he's a white rapper and i that was the first time i ever heard eminem and that sort of bridged the gap for me because there's a certain disconnect between a, a small child from the suburbs and tupac's music uh so m sort of bridged that gap and um I, I didn't immediately get into music i ended up falling in love with pro wrestling and doing the pro wrestling thing for a number of years, uh, accumulated injuries and sort of like, uh, difficult to navigate politics within the wrestling business just caused me to, to, to take a leave of absence. And in that leave of absence, I focused on the music I'd been writing and the poems I'd been writing since I was a kid and, uh, decided that I was going to give it an honest shot. And I did. And in 2017, I went, super viral with one of my songs dear rappers and uh here we are dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of viral songs later and hundreds of thousands of fans and sold out shows and number ones on billboard and it's crazy so we'll get back to the number ones on billboard but i want to talk to you a little bit about some of those inspirations you were saying obviously eminem being one of them and you kind of wrote a song that was kind of an ode to him i guess in its own way but who else was your inspirations um, I've always been kind of like, I've always picked like, you know, one, one guy and I've always been very loyal in that sense where I never had like a, a half a dozen favorite rappers or a half a dozen favorite wrestlers. I always picked one guy and, and that was my guy. So it really went from like, it literally went from Tupac to Eminem. Um, I moved on from that and went to like little Wayne for a bit. Uh, and, 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 and then I sort of grew out of that phase of my life where, where I had a a favorite rapper and, and now I'm just kind of inspired by my, my, my folks and my friends and, and, and my fans and the people around me and the things going on in the world inspired me today. And I don't really look to other musicians for, for that anymore. But when I was a kid, it was definitely those, those three, it was, it was Tupac, it was M and it was Lil Wayne. And aside from that, like my dad uh, really impressed classic rock on me. So I know you, you probably can't hear the influence uh, right away when you listen to my stuff. But Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Steppenwolf, uh, Janis Joplin, The Beatles, like stuff like that's that's my bag, you know. That's pretty cool, actually. And I was going to bring that up because in listening to your music, I mean, we've got a lot of rap in there. But I did hear some like rock 
kind of inspired songs and now you're doing pop. So I had a feeling you had a few other influences in your life. <laughs> yeah. And what's it yeah. like? Like, why do you want to touch on so many genres of music? I mean, obviously rap is the love and the favorite, but you mix that in. What's the inspiration for that? Um, I don't really know if that's like a conscious thing or not. Like, um, I just sit down in the studio here and, um, whatever, whatever comes out, comes out, whatever happens, happens. Like when I sat down and did ghost, uh, which is my most recent song, which is like a sort of like a top 40 folk pop, soft rock genre bending thing. Um, you know, I had no intention of doing that. I just, I just sat down and that just happened to be what came out that day. So I just really try to not like, um, sort of box myself in with silly things like genres and and stuff like that it's just like uh, there i have songs where there's three genres in one song and uh you know i i don't know it's just whatever whatever happens happens and i don't there's no rules to this anymore you know i like it because it's it showcases who you are in a lot of different ways and i think you're just letting things be you and i i think that's why you're so popular is that you know, you're not trying to force something. You're not trying to just be one thing. You're just being you, which is good. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about uh, Canada. Like the fact that you're Canadian is amazing. And obviously your girlfriend is awesome sauce because she's an Albertan like me. So talk to me a little bit about her and her involvement in your career as well. Yeah. So um, we're completely independent to two person team. Um I I produce and write all the music. Uh, my girlfriend Nova Rockefeller, uh, she's an incredible Canadian artist herself. Um, she shoots and edits all my music videos, and also works on her own music. I'm not exactly sure how she finds the time, but she does. Um, and we go back a long ways. We've been friends for best friends for sixteen years. We've been together as a couple for six years. Um, she actually put me on. My very first rap show ever in Alberta, uh, down on White Ave. Um, she was throwing her first uh, rap show, and I had just started recording terrible, terrible, terrible rap music. And uh, somebody had said that I should reach out to her if I wanted to get on a show. I did. Uh, she put me on the show, and then we uh, stayed in touch ever since she kind of went her way and i went mine i went to vancouver from there she went to toronto and 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 jamaica and, and california and we sort of reconnected again in california and um and started making music together and living together and dating and that was six years ago and um it was pretty cool we were living in the uh we were living in south central like in the in the ghetto and we were pretty much hooped. We 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 couldn't uh, afford groceries and rent at the same time, and it was tough times. I was plugging my fridge into my neighbor's garage, so my food didn't spoil when the power got cut off. And uh, by the grace of God, or the <laughs> or the power of the universe, some something happened one day. And uh, I wrote "Dear Rappers" sitting on the front porch in our in our front yard, and um literally changed our lives and here we are still together it's been pretty pretty epic journey that's pretty fantastic and what a bond you must have because of it i mean you've been through a lot together and you guys love the same thing and i'm gonna give her a shout out too because a lot of people say there is no rap culture or no rap world in alberta and she tried to help bring that forward and it's there it absolutely is and she's she's I, I mean as far as edmonton rappers go um I don't know if anybody's gone as big as Nova has. I mean, she's was on Island Def Jam and did some really, really incredible stuff. She's got a Walk a Flock of Flames number in her phone, so she's killing it. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of her. I think my biggest connection is me and Carly Rae Jepsen are friends on Twitter. So, like, that's where Sick. we're at. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> so, talk to me about this latest song. It's a little bit of a departure from the rap, as you said. It's more of a pop song, but uh, it's just taken off. Like, you're hitting, you're top in the Billboard charts. What is that like? Uh, it's bizarre, mainly because, uh, I think this is I got my, all the billboard plaques stacked up in here somewhere. Um, I, I think it's like my 29th number one on billboard. Um, but obviously the vast majority of those have come from hip hop. Uh, so it's really crazy. Um, 
to have gotten a number one with pop. It's not something I ever expected. I thought this was going to be a little quick, you know, I, I put it out on the 23rd, two days before Christmas. I was like, screw it. Like there's a lot of my fans out there who, who aren't with family for the holidays, who aren't going to have much under the tree this year. It's been a brutal two years for most of us. Um, and I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna put out this little video on the 23rd of December. Just give people a little something and, and we'll, we'll get back to taking things seriously mid January, like everybody else and get back to work. And all of a sudden, this thing has like completely blown up and it's playing on the radio and it's like having a, a viral impact on the internet and it's landing on billboard. And I'm sitting over here trying to juggle having my parents in town for Christmas and service what's turned into a hit record on accident. Uh, so it's, it's been crazy. Like it's, it's really, it's been, it's been mind blowing. It's been very cool. What a great way to start the new year though. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Couldn't, couldn't ask for a better kickoff to the year for sure. And talk to me a little bit about the inspiration for that song, because it is a bit of a departure for you. And uh, I know there's probably a few people who are going to put you in some camps with people like Taylor Swift and Nickelback, who they say crossed over and we won't go into what they call that. But like what, where does this song come from with you? You said it was just kind of one of those things you were throwing out there, but it obviously had some inspiration. Yeah. Um, Nova, my girlfriend. Um, it's look nova is the most talented artist i've ever met in my life um extremely extremely talented uh great writer just has a mind for this she is a true creative and it's really hard to write a song for somebody that's that damn good at making music um so i've been trying to write a song for nova for six years since we've been a couple um and they just never been perfect so i've always just trashed them because they weren't perfect and not only does nova deserve perfect i don't think she'd take any less than that uh <laughs> so <laughs> so it took a long time but i finally figured it out which is ghost and um and she's she is 100 percent the inspiration of, behind the song so the entire song is about her i haven't written a haven't written a love song and probably 10 years this is this is this is the first one and well, uh, you might want to keep doing it is all i'm going to say because it's doing you really some good favors too so <laughs> use that inspiration absolutely <laughs> okay so um i'm going to want to play the song we're going to get to all of that as well but the first thing i want to do is get people to know you a little bit better so you ready for some this or that type questions which would you rather okay sure. so i'm going to ask pepsi or coke i'm going with coke I'm with you on that one. Okay, good. Good call. Pizza or a burger? Burger. It's got to be a burger. <laughs> we are similar. I like this. Okay. Flossing, no flossing. Flossing. Be honest. Flossing. Okay, good. <laughs> there are so many people. I talk to my dentist all the time, and they say they absolutely don't floss. And it's like, well, start doing that. Okay. Yeah. Christmas, Halloween, favorite holiday? Man, they're both my favorite for different reasons. But if I had to live in one for eternity, I guess it'd be Christmas just because the vibes are good. Oh, see, and I do. That's what I love about it. But I do love the theatrics and the horror of Me Halloween, too. right? N Nightmare Before Christmas is literally like my favorite movie. And it's both holidays. So, <laughs> right. Okay. The Rock or Ryan Reynolds? Come on, you're Canadian. This should be easy. I'm it's, kidding. It's, it's, I, I, it's got to be Ryan Reynolds. Like, I'm not I'm not a Dwayne Johnson guy. I'm not, I'm not a rock guy. Now, you're originally from BC, right? Correct. Okay, so LA or BC? <laughs> I didn't say they were all going to be easy for you. I'm I'm going like hey man, hate me if you want, but I'm going LA because that 160 days of rain a year in BC, I cannot I cannot. <laughs> I will not. I agree so, with you 100%, though you've had a little bit of rain in California recently, no? For the last week, it's felt like Vancouver here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you for being on the show today. This has been fantastic, and I hope everybody gets to know more about you, thanks to this interview and many others, I'm sure, that are still to come. And I want to wish you success, because the songs are amazing, I love what you do, and I want you to keep doing it. So keep doing it, so we can keep playing it, and we can keep doing these interviews, if that works for you. I promise I will, and thanks for having me. It was a total pleasure. 
I've seen a hundred grand in cash. I've took the trip to hell and back. I've been around, never saw nothing like you. And I've seen lights up in the sky, and I've seen ghosts alone at night. I've seen some things, but they were nothing like. You. Till I walk through walls. Till I walk through walls. I wanna be with you, 'cause I'm me. I've seen things I swear to God that I still can't explain. I've been way too drunk and way too high, been dancing in the rain. I've seen butterflies and babies crying still until this day. Ain't seen nothing that's quite like you. Till I'm a cold, 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 stuck in all my life to you. And when I'm a cold, 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 stuck in all my life to you. I've seen the country far and wide. I meet my heroes all the time. I've been around, never saw nothing like you. And I've held diamonds in my hands. I've got a couple million fans. I met some folks, but they were nothing like. Till I walk through walls. Till I walk through walls. I wanna be with you, 'cause I'm me. I swear to God that I still can't believe. I've seen shooting stars and crystal balls and magic in the breeze. I've seen Paris, I've seen London. I have been weak in the knees. Ain't seen nothing that's quite like you. Till I'm a ghost, 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 I'm you all my life to you. And when I'm a ghost. Till it burns down, till the world ends, till it's all gone, till my last breath, till I leave town, till there's nothing left, till I'm in the ground, till I'm a ghost. I'll give all my life to you, and when I'm a ghost. Till I'm a ghost.